This is Monty, and you are? Carolyn. We're going to do the podcast briefly um, covering the current state of the economy alongside Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry, just so you guys know what are some of the uh, implications of what's the overall general direction, for instance, of what's going on with traditional the traditional economy versus the cryptocurrency space. Uh, it looks like uh, Trumponomics is actually not delivering according to what was promised. Um, if you're a Lowe's employee, uh, from what I understand, you got, you should be looking for a job. For instance, if you work for Lowe's, the hardware improvement or the home improvement company, L-O-W-E-S, you're probably going to be looking for a new job soon. Because um, they're laying off thousands of uh, employees. Uh, and this is uh, just an example of what's going on with uh, Trumponomics and the current economic situation. As compared to what's going on in the cryptocurrency space where you get a chance to work for cryptocurrency companies. Or crypto, the crypto industry working on blockchain, working on uh, cryptography, working on developing new payment systems working on various ways to send money across the planet uh, almost free of charge without government restrictions regard, w- w- without any intermediaries without any censorship without anybody um, telling you what you can do what you can't do we, you know, asking who you are asking you to do know your customer or KYC or AML otherwise known as um anti-money laundering, uh, all these things are definitely not something that we in the cryptocurrency space have to contend with. When you hold when you hold your own private keys, for instance, and your treasure wallet or your ledger nano wallet, you don't have to worry about identifying yourself or reporting to anyone in terms of what you're doing and where you're going and all that. Uh, one of the major things we need to take a look at in this particular podcast is the effect of low interest rates and the low yield curve, or the, or the, the inverted yield curve rather, alongside the um, very low yield that you're going to get on your 10-year treasury. Now, this is the problem. Government debt, as you guys already know, has gone through the roof. You got twenty-two to twenty-four trillion dollars in government debt that needs to be repaid. Okay, and right now you have a very low interest rate that uh, Federal Reserve has just put into place. So the ten-year bond, for instance, yields one point eight five percent. Again, the ten-year bond yields one point eight five percent as compared to the two point oh five percent that it did uh, before the before Jerome Powell just cut the cut. Uh, the other day, so you go from 2.05 to 1.85. Basically, that means that you're not going to be receiving very much yield on your money uh, going forward. And this is a real negative. Uh, Carolyn, you want to chime in on any of this? Just come on in, okay? So in- anyway, you, you're, um, the government, the United States government... It's not going to be able to pay its bills, mainly because no investor in their right mind is going to wait 10 years to get a 1.85% yield uh, on, on, on a government bond. The most, one of the, supposedly one of the most secure bonds on the planet is forcing you to wait 10 years just to get your 1.85% yield. Okay, when, uh, Those of us in the cryptocurrency space... We've seen Bitcoin, for instance, just that one alone has gone from pennies to roughly where it is now, $10,000, $10,500 per Bitcoin. That's an astronomical return. So most investors, even with a small percentage of their portfolios in, 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 in cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin, has seen ast- astronomical returns. And I can assure you that most major sophisticated investors, institutions, even governments are going to be putting more and more of their monies into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Basically, these are where the returns are. And see, the stock market has been propped up for a long time with cheap, free, freely printed money 
that the um, the government has made available to corporate America. But that free money is not so free in terms of what it does as far as the devastation to the dollar, uh, the devastating effects that it has on the dollar. So uh, you're, you're seeing uh, fantastic gains in the stock market, but it's all smoke, smoke and mirrors, mainly because when you give corporate America basically free money, at some point, uh, you're going to have to pay the piper. So what we're seeing right now, after the melt-up in the stock market, you're going to start to see a true meltdown in terms of what happens when people start looking at other asset classes, particularly the, the, the number one best-performing asset class, which is Bitcoin. Um, so we just wanted to chime in to let you guys know what's going on with the latest uh, issues with the economy. And that is manufacturing is uh, looking very, very, very um, disappointing. Uh, all, all, all indicators suggest that manufacturing is not coming to the United States. It's leaving and it's going elsewhere. And um, the consumer debt, household debt, corporate debt is still climbing outrageously high. Uh, savings, uh, the average amount of savings and investment that consumers have, it's still abysmal, 1% if, if they're lucky. Most Americans don't have $700 in emergency cash reserve for emergencies. Um, and, this, and, and, and the yield on the 10-year bond reaching a low of 1.85. Again, this suggests that you know every two years, if not every one year, the, the people in Washington, D.C. are going to have to go back and have this looming budget battle where one agency holds the other agency hostage to get money to fund the government's operations. When you can't even fund your operations for a two-year period at a time, that's not good. That's like your own household situation. You having to go back and forth to the bank just to get loans, just to pay your rent or your mortgage or your car note. That's insane. So basically, that's what's happening. But again, the alternative economic model that we're looking at in the cryptocurrency space with Bitcoin and blockchain, it gives you accountability, it gives you transparency, it gives you the ability to weed out all of the waste, all of the fraud, all of the BS that typically happens when you have a bunch of banks dipping their hands in everyone's pockets and um, basically depleting all the resources. All of the banks are charging people tons of money just to put their money in the bank and then they force you to disclose how much money you you actually have. If you got ten thousand dollars or even five thousand dollars, in a lot of situations, you have to fill out forms and paperwork. So anyway, we just wanted to chime in with that bit of information. Uh, anything you want to throw in about the current economic situation, Carolyn? No, I don't feel comfortable with it right now. Any particular reasons why? I see prices going up. And you know who's saying things that he hasn't come through with. Okay, so yeah, look at what has been promised as compared to what has been delivered or not delivered. And make sure you understand that we don't have to put up with this any longer. Uh, voting for this one or voting for that one is not the real issue. What, what the real issue is what you do with your money. Do you put your money in, in sound money? What we call sound money in the Bitcoin space where you get accountability, where you get your own private keys, where you can take your money from country to country, place to place, without worrying about customs, without worrying about the IRS, without worrying about you know, all of these other things going on to stop you and prevent you uh, from, uh, from moving about and doing the things that you're supposed to do, be able to do with your money. So anyway, you guys be prepared. Uh, the recessionary environment is right here, right now. Um, money is leaving out of the government coffers, nobody in their right mind, again, is going to invest in a 10-year government bond at 1.85%. That money is already gone. The smart money is gone. You, the taxpayers are going to be, be left holding the bag. And believe it or not, tax receipts are not going to cover the government spending. The government operations are too high, too exorbitant, just to, to, to be offset by tax receipts. The, 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 the small amount of tax receipts that the IRS is collecting, that the government is getting, is not going to cover the government obligations. Entitlement programs alone, Medicare, Medi-Cal, and all these other um, uh, mandatory uh, government programs, that money 
is going to have to uh, obviously <laughs> um, be cut off or, or something in probably seven to uh, ten years, they're saying. So, um, in other words, just get prepared. Put your portfolio, diversify your portfolios a little bit. Five or ten percent, no more right now in the cryptocurrency space. The primary holding should be Bitcoin. And then you, maybe you can take a look at some of the other projects. But definitely, uh, Bitcoin should be the primary place where you put your, the, five, the majority of the five or ten percent of your portfolios. Anyway, you guys have a safe day, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.